Pepper Grinder is the first release from Devolver in 2024, and if this is any indication, this is going to be another great year for the cult publisher, as Pepper Grinder is pure fun, loaded with romanticism for classic platformers all the way down to the small details. 2024 looks to be another amazing year for Devolver Digital, and we just want to take a quick second to talk about our 2024 goals as an outlet. There are plenty of little goals, but the main goal is to hit 15,000 subs, and you can help with that. If you enjoy what we're doing, then consider subscribing, leaving a comment right now, letting us know what you think will be the best Devolver Digital game of the year, liking the video, or sharing with a friend that you think might like it. Any or all of these is going to make a big difference in the algorithm. If you're unfamiliar, we are trying to cultivate a positive environment without toxicity, which is evident in our content that always takes a glass half full approach. Pepper Grinder is as indie as games come these days. It's been developed by one person and the music was created by another person. Developed by one man studio, Eric, Pepper Grinder essentially uses the burrow ability from Ori and the Will of the Wisps and builds a whole game around it. The story is fairly surface level to the point of almost non-existent, but it doesn't matter because the game is extremely satisfying to play. If we're to assume that this is one big love letter to classic platformers, then if having a fairly simple plot device such as the princess has been stolen can work, then so can this one. You find yourself shipwrecked on a beach of an island and your treasure has been stolen. You need to get it back and to do that, you're going to defeat a lot of evil narwhals. Master some challenging platform sections, find hidden rooms, unlock secret levels, and slay bosses. The difficulty curve for the platforming is perfect as the game constantly asks just a little bit more out of you. The bosses are larger than life and fun, however, their difficulty curve wasn't as predictable as the rest of the game because you never knew what to expect from each boss. Even if the game remained just about the one drilling through sand mechanic, it would have been great, but it constantly introduces new mechanics and attachments that make the game breeze by. Pepper Grinder leaves you wanting more, and it's always better to burn out than to fade away. On Steam Deck, Pepper Grinder runs like a dream. It controls easily, it doesn't get the fan running on high like some other indies, and it barely uses the battery. Pepper Grinder is also available on Nintendo Switch, and the hope would be that this is echoed over there. The biggest downside of Pepper Grinder is the length, and what makes this even more odd is that Pepper Grinder never feels like you're doing the same thing for too long. If you aren't looking for any collectibles or secrets, you could probably breeze through Pepper Grinder in about 4 hours. However, the price does fall in line with the length, and I would rather take a short experience that is fun from beginning to end over a bloated 50 hour game that slogs in the middle and crawls to the finish line any day of the week. The other issue is that the economy of the game didn't have that much impact or incentive. Pepper Grinder collects a lot of jewels and secret coins, but outside of purchasing keys from vendors to unlock secret levels, there wasn't much incentive to try and collect the jewels on each level. There is nothing wrong with skill trees and huge campaigns, but there is something about Pepper Grinder that harkens back to the simpler times of gaming that evoke classic platforming memories, complete with flags to raise at the end of the level, and an overworld map as a nod to Super Mario. Pepper Grinder is unpredictable from one moment to the next, and the result of this is pure, unadulterated fun. Until next time, remember to be nice to your fellow gamer, but more importantly, be nice to your fellow human.